connected to uh, people like uh, volunteers like you and would also request you on behalf of the section and also the volunteer of IEEE that please sir uh, uh, we would expect you handholding this student branch in future also so as rightly mentioned by agarkar sir you know like we look forward for many more such fruitful interactions with you in future also so thank you once again sir and looking forward for your enlightening talk thank you sanjivani group of uh, i mean college of engineering or you know giving the opportunity of getting my self enlightened thank you so much thank you sir all of us have been anxiously waiting to listen to the expert but before that let me request an introduction of the guest speaker over to you sanita thank you arya good afternoon everyone it gives me great pleasure to introduce today's chief guest to all professor dr badrul isham amr he did his phd in microwave in He is presently working as professor at Faculty of Electronics and Computer Engineering, University Technical, uh, Malaysia, Malacca. His area of specialization in the roots of pa passive and active filter (STW) antenna and switches. He has been actively involved in many research projects, to name a few: smart microwave imaging, system RF front end architecture development, low loss microwave transmission glass by using complementary FSS. structure based on hand coating material to increase microwave signal efficiency etc he has a large number of publication to his credit a uh, few of the uh, dr badrul has the chair general chair at 2017 asia pacific microwave conference he is a senior member of ieee and has been chapter chair of ieee malaysia apmt emc joint chapter in 2015 to 2017 today he has kindly accepted our invitation to enlighten us on one of the emerging technology which has much relevance in the life of not only technical people but also common man the it's nothing but the 5g technology now I, i hand over the session to you sir over to you sir <coughs> okay uh, thank you very much uh, madam to for inter introducing me so hello 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 everyone uh how are you doing today how's the weather back in india so fine thank you so much okay <laughs> so bismillahirrahmanirrahim assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh good afternoon everyone good afternoon <coughs> to all the uh, uh to all professors uh, doctors lecturers students uh, undergraduate students first year second year third year post graduate students uh, and also uh, to the member of the faculties member of the san giovanni college of engineering uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to share my uh, a li little bit of knowledge with everyone so the topic that i'm going to <coughs> share with you guys today is the fifth generation and beyond issues and challenges so as you may know uh, 5g is 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 already passed <laughs> now they are talking start talking about even now we are they are talking start talking about and even already start research in 6g uh, in in the, so 5g is is like yesterday but for the country developed country or developing country like malaysia we are still in the midst of uh, uh deploying uh, part by part city by city little by little because if you want to know it requires a lot of uh, investment to 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 invest in this uh, technology is either you upgrade the current 4g uh, system or you you install a brand new system 5g which is which require uh, a lot more capital compared with the improvement of the 4g system okay so my name is badur hisham ahmad i am from uh, university technical malaysia melaka as you can see from the uh, front page this is me <laughs> okay and 
so uh, so uh, this is my personal website if you would like to visit you can have visit but it is uh, quite old you need updated updating uh, with uh, my new activity and so on okay this is my email address if you want to contact me for future any future collaboration between uh, college of engineering uh, Sanjivani or even the IEEE student branch you can email me direct to me or even I have my personal whatsapp number uh, if you want it I can pass it to you okay uh, for your information um, I am a professional engineer in Malaysia uh, that carries a title of in senior IR I'm also a chartered engineer from IET uh, uh, Institute of Engineering Technology uh, UK and I'm also a senior member of IEEE Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, congratulations also to IEEE student branch, uh, Sanjivani College of Engineering for, for so many activities that uh, creating seminars. This is what the, the student branch all over the world or even in Malaysia is doing. They should copy what, what you guys are doing. Uh, call up uh, uh, lecturers, professors all over the world to give talks and share all the knowledge and information for, for the benefit of humankind. Congratulations to you all again. Okay, first and foremost, I would like to introduce my university, which is uh, University Technical Malaysia Melaka. Okay, for your information, uh, we are located in Melaka, uh, a bit south in Malaysia, and we are about 100 kilometers away from Kuala Lumpur. If you drive a car, uh, uh, it's about, it's going to take you one and a half hours uh, to Kuala Lumpur. Okay, capital city of Malaysia is Kuala Lumpur. Okay, uh, my university established in the year 2000 and we are pioneering in practice and application oriented. So uh, the mode of teaching is more on like uh, TVET uh, version. Uh, it's more on practical oriented version. So this is the picture shows here is the main campus of our university. So they are, we are quite new in Malaysia. We established, uh, in, uh, it's about 23 years establishment, but we consider new compared with other old university. Okay, this, we have two campus. We have technology campus and the main campus. So technology campus is more on mechanical engineering uh, for engin uh, engineering technology campus, also in technology campus. So we are situated in the historical city of Malacca. And this is gazetted under the United Nations Arts, the UNESCO Heritage Site. Okay. So you can, if you come to Melaka, if you come, I will take you and visit the, all the historical places in Malaka. This old building left by our, our, uh, our ancestors, okay, <laughs> from the Portuguese, British, uh, Dutch, and so on. Okay. Uh, UTEM or University of Malaysia Melaka use this is actually all uh, concept uh, by our previous uh, um, vice chancellor. But now uh, we have a new vice chancellor. But uh, still, we 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 are the the method of teaching or the the philosophy of teaching is still the same. Also, in general, currently we have eight faculties in in UTEM and we have eighty six program. Basically, it's a master uh, right from master and to diploma. We have 10,000, eh, about 11,000, 10,130 student enrolled. And uh, from the 677 is international students. And as for rich, uh, research, we have our niche area is advanced manufacturing and computing technology. And also we have six center of excellence to, to cater for the research and so on. So for student development, we have Actually, we have improved this number at this percent. We have actually reached 90 percent, eh, over 90 percent of graduate employability. And our graduates have reached, I think, more than 30,000 uh, reached uh, since uh, since 2005. And we have professional certificates attached or come along with our degree program, which is uh, basically um, Microsoft Data Science, Cisco, Oracle, Lean Six Sigma and etc. So as for industrial engagement, we have more than 100 industry partners. So this is quite a lot. So we have collaboration with different, different programs, different research, different faculty. So to, to come in, in the numbers, it come to a, a close to 100 industry partners. And we have also 
uh, industry to set up our their labs in our university, basically Samsung IoT, ST IoT Academy, uh, Cisco Academy, Microsoft I, IT Academy, Oracle Academy, and so on. And we have very close relationship uh, with our alumni. So as for human resources, we have about 2,000 plus staff. 800 of them are academicians and 1,100 are administrative. And uh, we have 326 uh, staff holding professional certification. For example, chartered engineer, uh, geologist, uh, landscape architect, landscape architect and so on, technologist and also professional engineer IR. <coughs> <laughs> okay, so 55% uh, staff is holding a PhD with a PhD and some of the academic staff uh, are appointed as experts and consultant with IOC CERT, blockchain, technology, CTFL CERT and etc. Okay, uh, so this is a bit of promotion for you guys. This is uh, uh, I'm currently a uh, chief editor of this journal, Journal of Engineering and Technology, uh, or this, the short form is JET or JET. Okay? And we are calling for papers, okay, uh, for volume 14, number 1, June 2023. So you can submit your manuscript now. The research team is basically mechanical and manufacturing engineering, electrical and electronic engineering computer science and, uh, and engineering, civil and building engineering, chemical and bioprocess, engineering mathematics and technology management. So the fees is free of charge if you want to submit. So our journal is indexed by Google Scholar, my site, my journal and also index Copernicus. Okay, So you are welcome to submit paper to this journal. Okay, now we have reached to this uh, the, the main uh, agenda for today, which is uh, the content of the talk. So basically, uh, the first, first I will give some introduction, the general background of 5G and 6G, the application, what, why is it so important? Actually, 6G is not only impact to the technical or to the academic world, but uh, not only to the communication, but is also impact to the economic uh, growth and so on, to the businesses and so on. Later, we will uh, share together. Okay, next I will share about the evolution of 5G and then the characteristic of 5G and also the millimeter wave microwave uh, engineering and also the technology of substrate integrated waveguide. And also I will touch a bit of uh, uh, the area of uh, my specialty which is design of SIW. And I will conclude this uh, uh, talk by give some conclusion and last but not least a reference. Okay, uh, let's define what is 5G. 5G is actually the fifth generation. Okay, five means uh, number five, uh, generation five, and G means uh, generation, okay, of cellular networks. Okay, so now before we have, uh, now is five means we have one, two, three, four. Uh, so the previous, uh, before, before five, Five is four, so we have fourth generation of cellular network. So now we reach the fifth generation. So it is actually uh, 100 times faster compared with 4G, and uh, 5G is creating the never ever been seen opportunities. Okay. Okay, so uh, never ever see opportunities for people and businesses. So later I will see what is it I mean. So. Uh, so it is faster in terms of connectivity and speed. Uh, for example, uh, our friend share uh, the, the 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 lost contact or the network problem. So maybe five G will 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 recover that so that no no connectivity issues. So the the data is faster and smoother in terms of uh, connection, and we have uh, ultra low latency and greater in terms of bandwidth. So these three important key aspects: speed latency and also bandwidth is the main criteria of 5G. Is advancing societies, transforming industries and dramatically enhance day-to-day -day experiences. So services that we use to see futuristic such as e-health, connected vehicles and system and advanced mobile cloud gaming have arrived. So all the 
the things that we can only imagine have now come to our doorstep. So it is uh, possible to deploy all this uh, by using 5, 5G. With 5G technology, we can help to create a fast, uh, smarter, safer, and also more sustainable future, hopefully. And what makes uh, 5G different from other uh, technology or even 4G? It is because uh, 5G runs on the same frequency uh, uh, as the 4G. So that are currently being used for our smartphone, okay? So the, the normal smartphone uh, or, um, uh, can be used. Eh? If, if, if they are not compatible with 5, 5G, they can still run on 4G. Uh, so um, for those who are really want the benefit of 5G, uh, please uh, um, equip yourself with the device that 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 uh, 5G ready. Uh, so, okay, so on Wi-Fi network and in satellite communication, but it enables technology to go a lot further. So compared with the uh, uh, previous technology, this one is like I said, based on three aspects, which is speed, latency, and also bandwidth. So beyond being able to download, so uh, in terms of speed, of course, is and the bandwidth, how uh, the full length of HD you can easily download to your phone in seconds and very very fast, even from the crowded stadium. And 5G is really about connecting things. So uh, no. Excuse problem. me, uh, Badrul sir. Excuse me. Yes. Now I think um, the screen uh, only the f uh, initial slide is uh, displayed. Uh, it is not moving. Oh, it's not moving. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I thought it's moving. Okay, so oh, the, uh, we are stuck at slide number one. Is it? Can you see the slide moving now? No, sir. Oh. Okay. Uh, in that case, can I? Um, how, how am I going to? So I should reshare the slide, I think. Okay. Okay. Okay, I should uh un okay, I share this. So I will share again the slide. I'm so sorry about this. So okay, I will share the slide. Okay, can you see the slide? Hi, yes, sir. This is visible. Okay. Uh, uh, so is it moving the slide? No, it is not moving. Oh, it's not moving. Okay, uh, can, can I uh, forward to you my slide and uh, you control from there? Yeah, that is possible, I think. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, I will share my slide. Okay, I will, I will upload my slide to you, to your personal uh, numbers, to the, to the WhatsApp numbers, okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, okay. Um. okay, I have shared to you my slide. Okay, so you can download it. And... One minute, sir. Okay. Okay. Do you okay. get this? Ah, oh, it has. It has come. It has come. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, okay. Uh, so, so please share this slide. So I. I will talk and then I will say next, next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sir. Oh, no.
should I start this uh, at the, from the beginning or? I'll share it now. Just don't. Okay. Yeah. See, I'm wearing kurta right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is it visible sir now yes yes yeah so just yeah okay oh, yeah. should i start uh, yeah, yeah yes sir yes sir yeah. from the beginning or yeah from here uh, from, from the first page from first yeah. slides oh, yeah, okay yeah. bismillahirrahmanirrahim assalamualaikum everyone for attending this seminar good afternoon thank you for Thank you, IEEE Student Branch and San, Sanjivani College of Engineering for giving me the opportunity to share my, my knowledge with everyone. So thank you uh, very much. So the topic that I'm going to share with you guys today is the fifth generation and beyond issue and challenges. So my name is Badur Isham Ahmad. I'm from Malaysia. I'm from the University of Technical Malaysia, Melaka. Um, this is my... Uh, personal website if you can see uh, if you can visit my website to see what uh, am i doing what have I so you can do so this is basically um uh, the, the the hot topic for today i think uh, because everybody's been talking about 5g uh, actually now they are start to to do explore in terms of research and uh, and so on or 6G, okay? So, uh, so it's like 5G is the thing of the past. So they are uh, they are venturing into 6G now, which is even uh, critical in terms of specification and so on. Okay, I would like to share with you a little bit of promotion of my university. Actually, I am from uh, UTEM or University of Technical Malaysia Melaka. Our university is um, located uh, around 130 kilometers away from uh, Kuala Lumpur, the capital city of Malaysia. And we have two campus. One is the main campus and the other is technology campus. So basically we have established since year 2000 and we are pre pioneers in the practicing and application oriented. Okay. So our, our syllabus curriculum is designed uh, to cater experiment so every subjects uh, and topics have basically have uh, their own experiment and practical in terms of uh, labs and so on so our, uh, our Melaka is actually situated in the at the UNESCO heritage site of historical city of Malacca so the United Nations have gazetted uh, our uh, the Melaka as UNESCO heritage site eh? Okay, next. Okay, so UTEM has eight faculties altogether. We have 86 program, right from diploma to PhD. Okay, we have total of 10,000, close to 11,000 student enrolled, and we have 677 international students. Okay, so the research basically we focus on advanced manufacturing and computing technology. And altogether, we have six uh, center of excellence. And for student development, about 86 uh, graduate employability. Actually, uh, today we have improved our graduate employability to up to more than 90%. Okay. And we have a total of 26, more than 30,000 actually, if you, if you count until 2022, 30,000 graduate uh, we have produce okay so professional certification we have very close we have linked all the professional certificate with our programs and for industry engagement we have more than 100 uh, companies who collaborate with us and we have industrial labs for example samsung iot sd iot cisco academy microsoft sd and so on we have our staff 
academic staff, we have total academic and administrators total of 2,000 plus. And uh, we have uh, 326 uh, of the academic staff are professional certified staff. Okay? And 55%, uh, more than 50% 50, 50 of the academic staff hold a PhD. Uh, so all the academic staff, some of them are appointed as as, as experts and consultant with the professional certificates. Okay, next. And I would like to promote a bit about the our my journal. My journal. I am the chief editor of Journal of Engineering and Technology, or JET. Uh, we are calling for papers for the volume of fourteen, uh, number one, June twenty twenty three. So. So uh, this is going to be published in uh, somewhere in June 2023. So the research theme basically is mechanical and manufacturing, electrical and electronic, computer science, uh, civil and building, chemical and bioprocess, uh, engineering mathematics, and also last but not least, technology management. So our journal is basically indexed by Google Scholar, my site, my journal, and also index Copernicus. Uh, for your information, the submission of to this journal is free of charge. Uh, so all are welcome to submit. Okay, now we have reached the main content of today, which is uh, the, the 5G and beyond issue and challenges. This is basically the agenda. Uh, basically, we, I will start with some introduction, the basic general introduction, and I will talk about the evolution of 5G and also the 5G characteristics and also I will touch a bit about microwave and millimeter wave engineering and also the the substrate integrated waveguide which is my my specialty my area uh, and also I will talk about design of substrate integrated waveguide I will conclude the talk for today with some conclusion and also last but not least a reference okay next so, okay, uh, definition. What is 5G? I, I believe most of you already know what is 5G. You just click at the Google, you say type 5G, all so many definitions is there. So, I would just want to contribute <laughs> to your uh, expectation. What is 5G? So, 5G is, is fifth generation. Okay, the five means five, five number five, fifth, the, the number five. Uh, G is stands for generation. So, this fifth generation. So, when you talk about fifth generation, automatically we'll also realize that th there would be 4G, 3G, 2G, and 1G. So, and the early stage of the no mobile wireless communication, the fi first 1G, and eh? first, or we call it 1G, uh, the generation, first generation. And when it comes to second generation, they call it sec 2G or second generation, third generation, fourth generation, and the latest one is fifth generation that comes into commercialization. The sixth generation is still under study and so on. So 5G is the fifth generation of cellular networks. It is expected that it can reach up to 100 times faster compared with the uh, previous predecessor, which is 4G. And 5G is creating a never ever seen opportunities for people and businesses. So these, uh, these uh, three uh, Keyword here: speed, latency, and bandwidth. Eh? It opens up a new opportunity and era. Okay, so it opens. Uh, okay, so so faster connectivity means uh, faster speed. So you want to communicate with everyone um, uh, uh, related to con uh, communication. So it's fast, super fast, and without without delay. Uh, so latency means uh, delay. So very little delay. And the bandwidth is so wide, you can st stock up or you can stack so many application in just one one spectrum. So there are many application uh, waiting to be explored. So advancing society, so you can have very, very advanced in terms of society and also businesses. Okay, very good. And also you can uh, improve your day-to-day -day experiences and services okay, can also be a futuristic and so on. So the things that you can only hurt in your dreams are now happening in real life. Okay? With 5G, we can help to create a smarter, safer and more sustainable future. Okay, what, what makes the 5G different? Okay, Actually, 5G runs on the same frequency radio as the 4G. Huh? So actually, if, you, if your device uh, it's not 
quite compatible with the 5G, you can still use 4G as your backbone. Uh, okay, so 5G is actually an option if you want to improve your system, but but your alone runs on 5G, but the rest runs on 4G is still not enough. They have to between 5G and 5G so that uh, the uh, communication is smoother. Uh, so it it, it uh, use your uh, your smartphone is compatible with 5G on the on the Wi-Fi network and in satellite communication. So, but it enables uh, technology to go even further. So this uh, uh, beyond uh, being able to download, so you can download uh, your your HD your video very fast with a full length, so no problem. If, even if you are in the in the crowded area so you can easily download your or even you can stream your video and so on in a in a no 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 problem in terms of uh, time and latency so 5g evolution things have changed a lot so that's the keyword uh from the one two three four and five so 5g is the big era now so 1g era is defined by briefcase size phones do you still remember the size of your phone during the 1G era is as big as the is the uh, bottle is uh, mineral water, I believe. <laughs> it's also heavy, all right? So when it goes to 2G, the demand of mobile services grew. So 2G, so now uh, when it comes to 3G, you, you can uh, start uh, capable, uh, able to send SMS, okay? Uh, and then the phone is become smaller and it can fit your pocket. And then uh, previous uh, technology, which is 4G, uh, it starts uh, venture into smartphone, app store, and YouTube, and so on. Now the 5G uh, is already re reshaped the uh, technology and the professional, uh, and also it can um, uh, create a whole new era, a whole new thing in terms of video and gaming and so on. So this is the evolution. Uh, I um, from the I, I actually from the Google image. Okay, uh, we start in the 1980, which is a 1G for mobile video calls, and also then we grew in 1990. Ten years later, into 2G, uh, mobile uh, voice call and SMS. Ten years later, also in year 2000, we have 3G for mobile web browsing, and ten ten years later in 2010, we have 4G for the mobile video consumption and higher data speed. And the year 2020, we have the imaging 5G. Eh? So every 10 years, there will be a new uh, generation of communication. So expected in year 2020, uh, 2030, the 6G will be emerged. Okay, so technology to enhance experience and drive the digitization of the, the industries. Next, okay, next, what is 5G capable of? So uh, what do you expect 5G to deliver? Okay, 5G is, uh, it improve your network connection. Uh, basically, that is the main uh, agenda, to improve the network. It provides a new opportunity and a groundbreaking solution, okay? So uh, just imagine uh, all those, uh, the, the devices uh, around you are connected. Uh, so how much data can you gather? How much, how much, uh, information can you share and then for example of course uh, with this you can uh, possible to reduce the accidents okay uh, so all the data has been shared for example everybody is more cautious of their safety eh, of their life and so on so life-saving application that can uh, fly okay uh, in terms of guarantee connections for example uh, during the life-saving uh, agenda for example what what happened in Turkey now? Uh, so you need uh, un uninterrupted connection. Okay, so basically uh, the production line in the industry also we can uh, prevent or minimize the the interruption. Okay, uh, because uh, uh, in the industry one minute or one second means money. So they need the system or the production line to run twenty four seven without without stop. Okay, uh, so five G can fulfill this with the uh, three words that I mentioned before, speed, latency, and bandwidth. So 5G open connection uh, cutting edge to improve safety and stability. So we can see uh, uh, smarter electricity grids, 
and as a result it can greatly reduce the carbon emission and also for vehicles it can uh, connect between vehicles as you can see nowadays uh, cars are smart smart vehicles they can connect it between a machine to machine so they can share data and uh, as a result they can prevent road collisions and accidents and also emergency services <coughs> also can be deployed uh, very fast to to help the 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 people who involved in the accidents and also we can connect the sensors eh? sensors for early warning uh, natural disaster <coughs> sorry so we can early uh, because we can predict as because of this um, data we gathered we can predict this very early and we can start uh, sending alarm eh? to the to the uh, area that been affected and drones drones are also a very important aspect the, you, as you can see now drones is replacing men eh? uh, men and machine for example for the uh, monitoring of the uh, uh, of your of your crops for example you can monitor you can identify. so you can store ai artificial intelligence at the drone it can, can pinpoint for example your your surveillance uh, of the uh, between country for example it can uh, prevent any uh, violation of the uh, uh, laws for example okay people who break laws can as uh, but you can you have to install all these facilities and so on in the uh, in the area and it, it need or it requires a bit of investment uh, and remote expertise with special specially smooth for salting and diagnose patient. For example, nowadays doctors don't have to be uh, where the patient is. You can just uh, remote or control uh, the operation just by a robot, okay, uh, from a distance, or you can uh, do a live uh, operation uh, by by. But but this is the require training because uh, uh, normal or previous doctors maybe need to be live in person to do the operation but now with the advancement of technology they have to adapt and adopt with with the current technology so transforming industry so now we talk about the industry how are they affected with the 5g so 5g is the foundation and responsible business so 5g eh? so the production line like i mentioned before is autonomously it reduces uh, man uh, intervention Okay, human intervention. It requires only robot that uh, it uh, maybe it requires only robot that move around to transfer all your the things, the goods, uh, and then it's it can, the, the 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 machine also is smart. It can predict how long it can run, how long it can stop, how long it need rest. So everything is being monitored by by using the the technology of five G. Digital replicas that can warn about real machine fault. Okay, digital replicas. So the, uh, this machine can can warn. Uh, for example, it will break down in one hour or two hours. So we can be ready. So logistic networks. So so for example, uh, logistic is previously used use a uh, conventional roads. For example, now they use drone. Uh, wireless or remote remote uh, driving vehicles eh? autonomous driving vehicles so no need human uh, to drive a lorry for example and so on so it reach uh, to the destination faster and more reliable and full traceable down to individual items so for example in your warehouse you can easily track down where the location of the item and so on so reduce also time to search for the item imagine your your warehouse is as big as the as as a factory for example and uh, so it, uh, it ranges to few hundred meters length and wide so it take time so with this uh, current technology or new technology can save time and remote access to powerful robots so you can control the robots uh, to do anything anywhere so so it improve for for example human have limitation in terms of strength but robot have uh, strength that can benefit uh better than human so increase increase use of iot for, so for example uh, all the uh, crops all the field uh growing field for for your um 
food can be installed IoT uh, facility. For example, uh, you can set up what time to water your your crops, what time to uh, put uh, the 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 uh, poison, for example, uh, to to kill all those uh, 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 bad uh, animals that eat your crops. So you can control everything, and then you can monitor it uh, with the with, for example, use your iPad and so on. So elevating experiences. Uh, so uh, this is more on uh, gaming. So your virtual uh, reality, augmented reality, okay, can be improved. So just imagine without ever going to the cinema, without ever going to the um, theme, uh, theme park, for example, you can have it in your home, even your home. You can experience, experience it yourself. Okay, so 5G sets a stage for immerse and different. Eh? You don't need to be there. Uh, and then it can uh, improve the realism eh? in terms of this virtual reality and augmented reality and can deliver sensory experience by touch and so on. So, and it, it, it create more methods, uh, more, more options. Eh? Virtual meeting can also, like what we are having today, can improve team productivity without, uh, it can Cut costs also without having me going to India. I can share. I can, I can be online with you guys and share all those uh, great things about 5G and stable and reliable, reliable connectivity in the crowded, even in the crowded spaces, and new angles and interaction to live and remote uh, even spectators. So, uh, uh, so with the all of technology, you. Uh, maybe at a certain angle you cannot uh, share or cannot see the, the view but with the current technology or the improved technology you can see all those uh, difficult angles and so on. So these are the things that are capable uh, to improve uh, with the uh, help of 5G, uh, advancing societies, uh, uh, transforming the industries and also to elevate, elevate this experience. And, and 5G for consumers like us, okay, so 5G is driving uh, the development of new uh, case and business opportunities. And for example, in uh, mobile gaming, in the fixed access wireless uh, uh, technology, new immers uh, immersive user experience, and also beyond a direct uh, revenue, okay, contribute. So you can imagine new business with the improved uh, sales, improved uh, profitable for profitability and so on so uncover the importance of uh, consumer market so if before uh, everything have to be face to face but now you can even sell your goods sell your products by by using online let me okay next so this is 5g for consumers as you can see the the growth is increasing as you can see uh currently in the year 2020 2030 is expected it will reach 900 billion eh? and a billion of uh 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 upper width of uh businesses eh? uh these are the blue one is baseline connectivity so uh by 2030 uh the digital services will be improved okay so you can explore on that Okay, so this is uh, consumer activity. So gaming, eh, basically, basically gaming. Uh, so if your kids love game, this is the the right time to buy your kids new new application, new computers for gaming. Uh, so it's um, uh, creating new uh, of new era of uh, mobile experiences. So even uh, they are they are making uh, playing game as as their uh, new source of income. So okay, uh, so they are so uh, previously we thought that gaming is just a waste of time, but now game you can create money, okay, out of that. Even the price of winning uh, the the competition of game is sometimes come in a in a, a few thousand ringgit, eh? a few thousand dollars, <laughs> okay. So five G for fixed wireless access, so millions uh, can't wait, eh? continue. Uh, so previous. Uh, a technology have to uh, maybe a, a bit of delay the speed is not quite good and then the bandwidth is also very limited but now in 5g we have improved by all these aspects so uh, 
so in terms of uh, connectivity and so on, it is much, much more better compared with the previous technology. And also the 5G is uh, so you can basically enjoy your life to the fullest. Basically, you can uh, enjoy work, you can enjoy taking holiday and uh, taking free, uh, a free uh, holiday good time, free time with your families and friends just by uh, and uh, together with this uh, advancement of 5G. So you are more relaxed with this. Uh, you can enjoy every moment with the, uh, sometimes you can play games with your kids with the uh, new uh, virtual reality and virtual uh, augmented reality. So no problem in terms of that. So uh, consumers value, uh, co okay, next. Eh? Okay, consumer value converted to business potential. So if you can see by tracking down the market trends and consumer demand is very crucial. So in the past, it's a very crucial to, to make sure is everything in hard copy, for example. But now, as you can see, everything is in the cloud, for example. So you can reduce the, the possibility of your record is uh, being stolen or being uh, damaged by fire or theft, but not everything is safe in the cloud. So 5G for business, for example, it creates a new innovation possibilities, okay? So the way we think, the way we work will be changed. So there are uh, some very important common characteristics that emerge. So in the 5G, for example, it can run the process remotely. You don't have to be there physically. You can maybe uh, be in a different country or different state. You can control your business elsewhere. So it can actually uh, real time. Okay, your your for example your meeting, your data for example is real time. It, it is not delaying. Okay, it is oper its operation is automated. So everything move uh, on its own by uh, just just a few fingertips. Okay, just a touch of a button, it can uh, run the system. And it uses com uh, compute uh, resources, for example, um, where it makes sense running application on the edge where relevant. So it has high security level. For example, as the as the technology improves, so does the security. So does the firewall being improved. So because now, as you can see, uh, people uh, the the hack and hackers is now everywhere. They want to hack. They want to test the system. So of course with the improvement of the technology. So the the high the security level is will be improved eventually to to make sure it, everything is secure. So this is uh, 5G for business. Uh, you can uh, so I uh, so the uh, the important items uh, that I've been talk about is in this uh, figure the for remote control, flexible, optimal performance, predictive real-time control, automated, high security, and new business models. So how does 5G work? So it, uh, so basically 5G is, is a, uh, it works as in a wireless communication system, eh? and, and, and it uses radio frequencies, eh? also known as spectrum, and it communicates through air. So uh, these are all plans that allow business to run their own isolated and insulated network slice in order to separate uh, from the competing internet traffic. So, uh, so basically, uh, it improved uh, the three things that still I mentioned again, speed, latency, and also the bandwidth. So who's the first 5G in, in, the, uh, uh, in the world, okay? Uh, in Korea, uh, it was uh, uh, published uh, in April 2019. Uh, the uh, the South Korea, the first country, the first nation to adopt the the, the large scale five eh, G network. So, whereby it appoint about two hundred and twenty four operators. Uh, so, so now uh, uh, in the world have been uh, grow. For example, in eighty countries right now, uh, start to venture into five G. Uh, even in Malaysia, they are in a big city. For example, Putrajaya and Kuala Lumpur, uh, the government have already start the party. Okay, now I'm uh, next. So now I'm going to touch about a bit about radio frequency spectrum. So as you can see now, uh, the radio frequency spectrum is uh, uh, very, eh, very from uh, up to the, the, the wavelength of uh, 10 to the power of 3, uh, right to the, right to the, 
um, uh, 10 to power of minus 12. So uh, from the radio radio uh, type of wavelength up to the uh, gamma ray type of, uh, type of wavelength. So, but the gamma ray is very, very short and very tiny. is as, as, as small as an uh, atom uh, size eh? or molecule size or atomic nuclear. So the one that uh, we use basically up to the microwave level. Uh, so up to, uh, if you can see here, 10 to the power of 8. Uh, maybe can go 10 to the power of 9 for the frequency. So in terms of wavelength, uh, it tends to the power of minus 12 for the wavelength, wavelength of the uh, uh, wavelength of the uh, uh, frequency that we use. Okay, so we starting from the low frequency uh, up to the kilohertz uh, size of the building, as big as the building, the wavelength. Okay, uh, and then when we go to the uh, when we go to the right, it becomes smaller, smaller, smaller in size. So uh, terrestrial communication uh, limited by visual hor horizon, for example, uh, 40 miles or 64 kilometer. So at the height, at the high end uh, of the band, for example, um, uh, for example, the molecular starts uh, becoming absorb absorbing, okay, for example, uh, and, so, and so on. So we will focus only uh, the microwave part, eh? microwave, uh, microwave part, and also uh, if if the approximate scale would be the butterfly, butterfly size. Eh? Typically, it is a is a line of sight communication, and but there are limitation, and um, uh, there are some technique to to we will look at uh, later in the slide. Okay, next. So. Uh, so how far does the microwave application have been developed? So, okay, so first time people use microwave. Uh, uh, as you know, before, uh, we use, uh, uh, for example, uh, microwave basically being explored in World War II. Okay, um, you can, as you can see here in the figure, it, it is actually a radar. So being used uh, by the US and British during the World War II. So, and as you can see, uh, on the right image is actually the, the micro seed circuit. So, see, things have changed uh, the, from the big bulky radar to uh, and right to the very small, uh, maybe in the palm size of the uh, hand of the um, uh, satellite dish. Uh, so, the size is improved. So, it becomes very planar, very compact, very tiny and very handy. So as you can see, this is a two-port network. Uh, it comprises of the filters, LNA, and also power amplifier. So next, so this is the microwave frequency range. Uh, so from the low, low frequency to the high frequency, so you can see the application from radio to mobile phones and also to microwaves. And as you, if you go higher, uh, it goes to the visible light, eh? visible light. Uh, what you can see in the sky, for example, and also ultraviolet X-rays and gamma rays. So as the frequency goes higher and higher, the ionizing radiation is 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 uh, come into place. And uh, in the low frequency range and around the 5G in the purple uh, spectrum, is more on non-ionizing radiation. So it is more safe safer. So uh, as you can see, the band uh, vary from L band right to KA band. So basically, uh, now uh, people are being uh, explored. They study in the area of tera terahertz. Eh? Terahertz basically more than one hundred gigahertz eh? or zero point one or uh, terahertz like that. So uh, so basically, but uh, in for five G, uh, we 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 will only concentrate. Uh, in the sum, we can use the C band as our frequency range. Eh? So, as you can see, the point to point communication link. Okay, next, eh? wireless microwave communication. So, point to point communication link. Wireless network is also an example. So, this is this point to point communication link and wireless, uh, uh, wireless network. So, like this. And also uh, to communicate to other buildings. So, 
so you use point to point communication so between main office and the branch office can communicate uh, between uh, between them is a line of sight so all of you are using communication between towers okay sometimes they, there is some microwave radio uh, relay networks so okay uh the a uh, collision avoidance system also use this uh, microwave so for example it gives early warning so before before uh, when it sees ob obstacles in the in in front of them so it can uh, 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 create a warning for the drivers to break early okay uh, as soon as it detects uh, uh, at a certain certain distance it will give sound first so when it uh, closer uh, give uh, sound and also uh, start to break and when it comes even closer it will um, uh, create a warning sound and uh, apply the aux auxiliary brake eh? so 5g so this is next okay mobile communication so we are go into the mobile communication we start with 1g in 1981 so it evolved into 2g and finally uh, right to 3g 4g and 5g so first we talk about speed increasing so from 1G, one g one one giga one g which is kilo kpps and now we have in 4g which is megabit per second okay which is 100 megabit per second and with 1g there is no internet capability then the internet from narrow band uh internet to a wide band internet so now it's ultra broadband internet for 5g okay uh next uh slide number 29 so so we can improve enhance the mobile network so multiple of tens of giga gpps ultra reliable low latency for mission critical uh, net, uh mission mission critical uh, communication hazardous mines and mission okay uh, and also um uh, machine should be able to respond in lightning speed respond eh, at the same time and we have also machine to machine uh, communication industry iot and massive iot not only between mobile but more than that so put into picture home uh, there is a video sensor communication between each other so all the application as part of the 5g smart transport system high speed okay, this the tower that communicate with all the application eh, high speed plane so some frequency uh, band already existed so we took into the uh, mobile uh, uh, we look into the millimeter wave unlicensed microwave frequency already coexist we look into millimeter wave so as you can see uh, you, now currently the microwave frequency has so many application so it's a bit crowded so maybe the best way is to to increase to to add on the uh, frequency which is into uh, the millimeter waves which is more less crowded uh, based on uh, compared with the microwave frequencies okay so what are the challenges uh, so common 2.4 gigahertz transceiver so next is the microwave and millimeter wave transceiver so so now this is the 2.4 gigahertz transceiver so circuits already is, exist in ism and uh, medical band so uh, there is an antenna connected to those uh, multiple uh, chips okay so microstrip will not uh, working at limited wave there will be some losses okay so what's the best choice is to use the waveguide okay for example like this millimeter wave transceiver and 60 gigahertz transceiver so but uh, uh, more common uh, structure to use the waveguide so but it cannot carry uh, in your pocket if you use a waveguide why because it's a bulky heavy and and actually it's difficult to design compared with the uh, micro strip okay so the solution is to, to have the micro strip but with the waveguide capabilities or waveguide uh, advantage okay as you know the disadvantage of the waveguide is the transition is hard hard to do difficult because uh, you have to uh, communicate between the uh, connect between the three-dimensional waveguide and also the micro strip uh, uh, connection so you have to build uh, an adapter for example so typical 
concept complex structure are required. Eh? Small fracture will degrade the performance. So when it comes to uh, millimeter wave, uh, very small fracture, very small difference in uh, uh, centimeter or in uh, millimeter, it can uh, uh, degrade the performance. Okay, next. So this slide shows the uh, uh, the so this is this this slide shows the how the connection between the waveguide and the microstrip. So you have to create the the adapter between the microstrip so and the waveguide to to connect between these two different uh, three dimensional structures. So it it requires a high manufacturing cost as you can see. Uh, difficult to connect. One is plana and the other is not not uh, plana structure. So it requires a transition, and sometimes the transition is complicated. Uh, so, so what is what is the solution? The solution is SIW or substrate integrated waveguide. So in 19, 1994, uh, it is actually been introduced and. And the first one is uh, actually uh, from a Japanese pattern eh? uh, because uh, uh, the pattern shows uh, plated through holes and it runs uh, through a bias. This this wire is uh, connect, act as a side walls, uh, like a waveguide side walls. So this, so we can uh, integrate the waveguide into a planar, start from this idea. So start, people start to use uh, a laminated uh, waveguide, uh, so for example, this laminated waveguide uh, designed for collision avoidance radar system, and also they are using post wall waveguide, which is suitable for millimeter wave uh, application. So, technology background so uh, the bulky, eh, the bulky uh, waveguide SRW bridging the gap between the waveguide and microchip technology, and it will generate different circuit in planar substrate. So in the design of a uh, low loss IC, high Q system uh, are often uh, required eh, because uh, it can achieve uh, by means of current planar circuits. So conventional uh, classic uh, waveguide uh, system, for example, uh, sometimes not suitable for low cost manufacturing and it is tedious in terms of post-processing and it is bulky in size and also uh, so we need a hybrid eh? hybrid to, to to marry this planar and non-planar structures and sometimes it is difficult to achieve wide band impedance uh, matching between the low impedance at the device and high impedance uh, with guide circuits so we need to bridge eh, between this uh, rectangular waveguide and micro street uh, technology so by using by using substrate integrated waveguide or SIW. So uh, so next okay so uh, SIW or substrate integrated waveguide can be defined as realization of non planar metallic waveguide in planar by means of incorporating uh, periodic metallic uh, via structure in copper cladded uh, uh, dielectric sheets okay. So, for example, the advantage of use this uh, SIW is it, it, it has a low loss, okay? Okay, it has a low loss and it has a high Q eh, compared with uh, micro strip and it is uh, actually self-consistent electrical shielding because of this uh, bias. So, it can shield, it can protect, like, act like a shield. So, easily fabricated using a uh, normal PCB process and it is because it's already planar, so it is uh, easily uh, integrated with other planar circuits. Okay, this is a complete uh, family structure of substrate integrated circuits. So you have the first one, uh, substrate integrated waveguide, SIW, and the second one is substrate integrated slab waveguide, SISW, and number three, you have substrate integrated non radiating dielectric guide or SINRD. So there is no variant uh, complete. Uh, the fabrication is not uh, so uh, uh, for for the case of number two and number three, eh, for the uh, SISW and SINRD is the fabrication is not as easy as the first one because 
because uh, as you can see, it has different different layers and the bias is also uh, different from the first one. So the first one is uh, more the easiest in terms of all these three uh, subset integrated circuits. And also the four, five, and six, which is SIIDG, subset integrated image electric, and you has SII NDG and SIIG, so subset integrated annular guide. So among the six, the first one is the easiest of all. And also we have this transition between SAW and the microstrip. Okay, this is the uh, subset integrated web guide without the transition. There is uh, port one and port two, there is wire holes, metals, wires, the top and bottom is shorted, and you have in between is the electric substrate. And, and then you have a taper a transition between uh, SIW and also the microstrip. Okay, you can use either taper or coplana transition. So the transition have a few options. If you're not using the taper, you can use coplana transition. Okay, so this is the propagating modes. How does it compared with the waveguide. So and the good thing is SIW propagating mode is the same as as those in the uh, waveguide, rectangular waveguide. And the propagation constant in SIW can be calculated as TEM0 modes, okay? So the continu this continuity in the sidewall does not allow the Z-directed current and um, the TE0N, TEM0 and TEMN might present a leakage, significant leakage cause. This is because, as you can see, the way they're propagating. For, for example, the most stable uh, propagating mode is the E10 mode. So it propagates like this. Uh, so as you can see, all the modes are confined in uh, within the uh, bias. So it, uh, as so you can see, uh, as the confinement, uh, the there is no leakage eh, in terms of the RF energy. So the magnitude, uh, if the electric field and the surface current density is confined in the bias, between the bias. So this is the cutoff of the TE10 mode, uh, TE10 and TE20, light modes of the straight pattern SIRW versus width and the uh, D, the distance. So this is the frequency, cutoff frequency, and the width, millimeters. So as you can see, the picture is not quite clear so so as the frequency uh, uh as the frequency increases okay uh the cutoff as the cutoff frequency increases the width uh is reducing uh, reducing based on this so so it's normal based on the as the frequency cutoff increase which is which means the the wavelength eh? the wavelength is shorter so as a result because of the shortening of the wavelength the uh, width is also decreasing, this decrease in size. So this is a comparison of the dispersion curve of an SIRW with an uh, equivalent rectangular waveguide. As you can see, the beta or the the dispersion curve, okay, as the frequency increases from 10 to 60 gigahertz, the the beta is improving from uh, zero to 2000. Okay, this was oh, okay. Next is the SIW design theory. So actually, they are, they have been uh, developed by the researchers all over the world to calculate the cutoff frequency. For example, FCT one zero mode and FCT two zero mode. So with this calculation uh, shown in the figure. So if you follow the design rule between the S and the lambda. Okay, between the S and the distance, the distance between uh, of the diameter, you will get the size of the SAW. Okay, by following this design rule, uh, you will, uh, because you are, why do you need to cater for this? Because uh, if you put the bias too close between, uh, between each other, uh, it will not be able to fabricate and the, 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 the signal chances of the signal to reflect is very high. If you put it in the too far apart, 
this the signal will be leakage eh? leak to, to the uh, space to the environment okay so design rules you have to stick s must be bigger than d and s of a lambda must be smaller than 0 0.25 okay so these uh by holes if a uh, study have shown that uh, the ratio between s of lambda and the d of lambda uh, can be plot eh? can be plot uh in the graph shown in the figure because um if you have the ratio is too small uh the leakage you will be in the leakage region you will if you have it too too big also in the leakage region also so you have to be uh, careful in terms of uh, the area where you want to put it uh, the region of interest which is in the middle so so if you have this ratio s of lambda and d of lambda right you can minimize the uh, leakage in the un unwanted region or territory. So this has been published in 2006 eh, uh, in the IEEE transaction. So, okay, uh, actually we have done a few examples. Okay, uh, we have uh, construct these uh, wire holes and uh, use the RT, substrate RT Roger to write 5880 uh, so the frequency is in the X band equivalent. We have kept using the formula to calculate equivalent width, which is 15.60 millimeter, and the width of SLW is 16.16. And we have calculated the diameter, the pitch, and the length. Okay, and we have plotted the graph, eh? graph for the uh, transmission lines of the SLW. So it shows uh, good uh, response as and behave well and behave as as an expected uh like the transmission line of the sw so actually we can have also substrate integrated waveguide cavity so but uh, cavity means um, by constructing a square by put a bias around a square shape we can create a cavity a, a substrate integrated waveguide cavity by using this this formula of of this uh, cut off frequency the length and the width okay so uh, for the first modes it is uh, calculated to be 9.48 for modes 2 is 14.46 and mode 3 is 15.52 so the size of the cavity basically uh, uh, the cavity SW uses substrate roger to right and the width is 17.8 the length is 60 millimeter and the diameter is one millimeter and the pitch is 1.6 millimeter in size and uh, this is the uh, magnetic field that have been plotted this is mode number one mode number two and no mode number three okay so this is a vector plot for magnetic field so okay uh, so uh, if you go further into the transmission line losses Okay, so the propagation constant of the transmission line, so is, uh, what the propagation constant uh, of the transmission line is follow this equation, gamma equals to alpha plus j beta. Okay, and the oscillating electric and magnetic circuits in the guide uh, is in the form of H field and E field, which is magnetic field and electric field. Okay, so we have this equation in dual uh, form. So alpha C, which is the losses due to external metal conductivity, alpha D is lost due to the uh, dielectric medium, and alpha G is lost, uh, uh, lost due to conductivity in dielectric medium, and alpha R is lost due to radiation. So, so we can actually itemize all of these losses uh, from the conductivity, from the dielectric feeling from the um, conductivity of the dielectric and from the radiation. So we can customize, we can analyze which of these uh, contribute to the highest losses. So this is a W attenuation due to conduction uh, current. Okay, this is equation uh, to calculate the uh, attenuation due to conduction current. 
So alpha C, so loss due to conduction. So B is the height of the waveguide. Uh, A is the height of the waveguide. B is the height of the of the substrate. I think. Uh, so the gamma is square root of uh, uh, mu over epsilon, and it's actually a wave impedance. And K is actually the wave vector. And lambda is the skin depth, and RS is the sheet uh, resistance. Okay, RS. So again, uh, so if we can uh, uh, simplify the equation, gamma equals to lambda d plus j beta is equals to k square tangent delta over 2 beta plus j beta. So dielectric, loss due to dielectric is also can be simplified equals to k square tangent delta over 2 beta. So where tangent delta is the loss tangent of the dielectric substrate and the approximation is correct if uh, tangent delta is much much smaller than one which is usually the case for microwave electronics okay so for example at 10 gigahertz frequency the tangent delta is zero in air um, is uh, 1.5 times 10 to the power minus power uh, in uh, uh, this is uh, in teflon and is one times 10 to the minus four okay so this is the the following is identification is made. So you have, this is the, okay, next is SIW attenuation due to radiation. So this is the design principle. So spacing is S and the diameter is D and the distance between the bias is A. So S is much, is much less or equal to D and the D is much uh, less or equal to A over 5. So if you take care of this for, for space, specific family mode, the leakages decrease with the increasing frequency and are maximal at the cutoff frequency of the mode and the radiation leakage factor AR or alpha R is there independent of the substrate properties and independent of the height of the guide. So this is uh, the design example that has been produced by using uh, uh, substrate integrated wave guide. This is a band stop actually, and this is the hybrid notch uh, filters that integrated the hybrid, 3dB hybrid and also SIW filters. And this is a pre-distorted uh, band stop filters whereby uh, the early, the initial losses have been introduced, for example, 6dB. This, okay. The losses can be actually controlled between 3dB and 6dB and so on. So, okay, I've uh, reached almost the end of this talk. I'm sorry to take a lot of time, maybe. Uh, so, this is the opportunity and challenges that uh, might be faced. So, the opportunity is mixed integration. We can have of different waveguide on substrate. And also, we can have high-density multi-layer integration. And also, active and non-linear integration of the waveguide. And also, monolithic integration of circuit on subset including the antenna so this is the monolithic is like mmic monolithic integration of all the circuits onto the same substrate and also we have active and non-linear active okay we can also design and active before and uh, the example that i show you is mostly on the non uh non-linear or non upper passive circuits only but we can also think about active and eh? active component to integrate using integrated waveguide. So high density multi-layer integration is the one possible by, by improving our fabrication technique, we can improve uh, the, the fabrication, the multi-layers, and we can have mixed integration between different different types of waveguide and so on. So as a conclusion for this talk, so we can see that substrate integrated circuits for low cost uh, it's good for high density RF and millimeter wave uh, circuits, hybrid design platform for uh, linear and non linear, uh, or I mean uh, planar and non planar structures, uh, potential monolithic substrate integrated circuit forward system on substrate, and also substrate integrated circuit opens up new possibilities eh, to implement novel circuits and also system in the low profile structures. And also the technology can be a major player uh, to meet the current technology requirement 
of millimeter and also microwave circuit spectrum. So these are the reference that we use. So thank you very much for your patience and time. So I'm welcome any questions from the audience. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for this wonderful session. As you enlighten us with very uh, new, uh, many new new things uh, to give synops like the technologies which were based in your uh, country, Malaysia, and different kinds of activities you took for your students and different topologies you gave here for them. Uh, the systems you told us is very enormity and uh, about the 5g technologies which were uh, the things which we were unaware of, uh, of you also make us familiar with their, those things and thank you for very much we will like we would like to have new opportunities from your side for us in further future life uh, thank you very much now the session is open for discussion you may either uh, unmute and ask questions or type in in the chat box Yeah, please. Uh, it is open for discussion. So we would like to have the questions from the audience. In fact, few of our research scholars have also joined. So okay. Yeah, please. Uh, uh, if you have any thing to ask, any specific doubts. Badrusan, uh, shall I ask a uh, uh, question? Hello? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, it is about, um, of course, it is a general question. Um, uh, um, as far as the um, research projects at uh, your um, um, uh, university is concerned in this particular area, what present research projects are going on? Can you just elaborate a little bit? Uh, OK. Uh, the only uh, issue is uh, because you are, you are currently designing a devices, for example, uh, microwave device filters and so on but the application is um, it's been commercialized by others without um, uh, without considering you to apply so what what currently I'm doing is to apply some of the projects some of the filters or the devices into other application because currently now we have um, um, a system we develop a system uh, to 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 sense a lightning so so we uh, we designed a rf front end that includes uh, antenna uh, lnas and also filters uh, that connect to a with dsp uh, the signal processing unit to to capture lightning signal or ra lightning radiation so currently we my, my project is more applied to that to that area so there is one other uh, the other is uh, to study to improve the the wi-fi signal in rural area for example we 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 design a, an antenna to to boost the uh, the gain and the directivity to improve the wi-fi signal in the rural area as you know in the rural area the wi-fi connectivity is sometimes very weak so what we do we we design a simple helical antenna uh, because uh, Wi-Fi usually work in the uh, low frequency area, so uh, low frequency region. So we design a helical antenna to 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 boost, to to, to redirect, to capture all those. Uh, but what we have to make sure it, it operates or it radiates or resonates at the same frequency as the Wi-Fi signals. So we improve the uh, the gain and the reactivity so that uh, the, the 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 signals. Uh, are getting stronger in the in the isolated area okay okay thank you sir thank you uh, agarka sir um, would you like to uh, yeah thank you sir thank you i i also have a uh, one question uh, sir this siw antennas uh, what you just now told us 
whether they are I mean used specifically for uh, 5G systems or it has got some other applications also. Okay, uh, good questions. Uh, actually, yeah. actually, can apply to any. We can replace any uh, uh, prana devices because, uh, as you know, microstrip suffers from losses. So, uh, it has low bandwidth, um, and then um, it, it is not. Um, uh, it has low Q, for example. But if you use the SAW, although it's uh, in terms of size, is much uh, bigger compared with microstrip. Um, uh, it is. Uh, higher Q compared with the microstrip. It has a uh, bigger, um, it has, uh, um, in terms of uh, lossless, loss is better compared with the microstrip. And it is um, actually can can connect easily. Uh, so if you are worried, it, it is not a uh, planar co compatible. It is can easily connected with uh, other planar devices because uh, it can uh, use, you can use uh, taper, taper, uh, or you can use step impedances as your, it doesn't require any, any complex adapter and so on. It's just a very simple transition uh, between the planners. You just um, connect them and then it can reduce uh, the, the mismatch between the planner and non-planner structures. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. So, if any other question from the audience? Okay, Arya. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir. All the participants are requested to fill the feedback. The link for is uh, which is shared in the chat box. I now we have come to the concluding part of this session. I'm here to acknowledge the contribution of all those who have instrumented in organizing this event. At the outset, let me thank Professor Badrun for accepting our invitation and making us aware about many new things about 5G technology. In spite of his pressing demand of his time, you have been kind enough to interact with us today. We look forward to meet you in physical mode in the near future. Thank you, sir. I am also here to thank Dr. Vinit Kotak, sir, for being here. I would like to thank our management and director of St. Jimmy College of Engineering. Let me thank the branch mentor, Dr. B.S. Agarkar, sir, HOD of Electronics and Computer Engineering Department, Dr. Sebastian George, the branch counselor, and Professor Dr. M. B. Gauli, Dean of International Relations, for their valuable efforts. Thank you, sir. And all the HODs, deans, faculties, and students for their valuable time, presence. Thank you all. Thank you to all the volunteers of IEEE Student Branch for putting their best efforts in organizing this session effectively. Thank you all. We look forward for many such programs in, in future. Thank you very much. Here, with all your permission, I conclude this event. Yeah, and thanks to Arya as well as Sanika for nicely uh, hosting this particular program. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank, thank you, Badrul sir, and thanks thank to George sir also. Yeah, thank for you. coordinating all this. Thank you. And thanks to all others. Yeah. We will try to meet physically in the near future, sir. Yes, sir. Huh? Can wait to try uh, chai in India. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Definitely, okay. sir. Whenever you come to India, you please let us know. Yeah. yeah no problem. Yeah. Or sometime we will call you specifically to visit yes. our institute. Yes. yes. Definitely. Thank you, Thank sir. You Thank so you very much. much. Yeah. Nice you. Bye -bye. Have a nice weekend. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Same to you also, sir. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And our, for students, we will start our next class in place of 2.45 at 3 o'clock. Yes, sir. If all of us can make the camera on, we can have a photograph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All are requested means to make the camera on. Arya? Hello?
Arya or Sanika, we can request them to take a snapshot. Yeah. Arya, you please uh, have a uh, snapshot. Taken. Hello. Siddhiki sir, you can also you can also do a snapshot. Yes. Please do a snapshot. Taken. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Thank you. Oh, thank, yes, you. Sir. thank you. Very bye, much. bye, sir. Yeah. Have a nice weekend, everyone. Yeah. Same thank to you, you also, sir. Thanks to all. Jor, sir, you can conclude the meeting now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah.